Hi everyone, welcome on back. Today we are talking about everything related to music centers. Why I do them, how I do them, and what we do in them. Music centers are something that my kids ask for all the time. So it has become a very popular thing to do in my classroom. So I will provide you with all of the tips that I have gathered so far to get you started with doing music centers. If you're new here, hi, my name is Shana. I am a music teacher that teaches kindergarten to grade five music in Manitoba, Canada. And my goal is to share my limited knowledge that I have gathered so far with you. So to hopefully make your lives just a little bit easier. So let's hop on right in to music centers. All right, so let's talk about the why for music centers first. My first why I do music centers is because it creates space and time to work with individual students and small groups of students. This space and time is created because your other students are working on something independently and you're not having to direct teach everyone. When I create this space and time, there's a few different things I do want with it. Sometimes I will pull a group of students who all need to work on one concept. So maybe it's clapping rhythms. I pull them and we all work on one concept. So sometimes I use this space and time to work with students on something that's new. So the last time I did music centers, we talked about rhythms in the group that I took with me and rhythms were something new to us. So I took that group and I did like small, very focused instruction with those kids rather than trying to teach it to my entire class, which for me, I find works really well. Reason number two is you can gather very valuable assessment data from centers because students are generally working independently because you're either working with a small group or you're assessing or something else. So students are generally working very independently and this is the work that they can produce by themselves. It's also a good time to like see what students are writing their notes the right way, see what students can name notes, see what students can name instruments. And if you choose your centers wisely, you'll be able to gather a whole bunch of data from that. Number three is that music centers, how I do music centers, it fosters two things independence from the students because they can't rely on me because I'm working with someone else and it fosters collaboration among the students because they're in little groups I'm working with someone else so they have to ask someone else I find that this music center time allows for students to get to know each other better in my classroom and get gives them more genuine experimentation with music because of the independence that it fosters. Music centers can also provide a time for some students to grow as leaders amongst their peers, especially if you take that into consideration when you are making your groups, because you can have a strong student lead your other students through the centers. All right, so now that you know my why about why I do centers, I'm going to give you some ideas of how I organize centers. And first, we're gonna talk expectations. Like everything else you teach, I'm sure, in your music classroom, you have expectations for. You have expectations for how we play the instruments and expectations for how you walk into the classroom. It's very key when you're doing music centers to have expectations for how the students act in music centers because they are so independent. You need to review with your class every time that you start music centers what the expectations are and have the kids tell you them rather than you just tell them all the time. I also find it helpful to provide students of what I expect. So if I'm talking, say we're doing a Play-Doh center, like Play-Doh mats making notes. I tell the students, I expect that you are making them on the mats and I show them. I expect that you do not mix the Play-Doh and then I'll usually ask them questions. So do we mix the Play-Doh at the Play-Doh center? No. Do we fight the puppets at puppet center? No. So then they are more involved in the conversation. And then if they aren't following expectations, you can be like, I told you this is not what we do. And you told me that this is not what we do. So that's very helpful. It also is a lifesaver to have a very clear schedule when you were planning out your centers. When I did centers in my very like first chunk of teaching last year, I didn't have a schedule. So I had to try to remember between all my classes, which group had done what center. It was crazy. I don't know why I didn't have a schedule. It was a poor decision. So this year I have made like a rotation and I plan out the entire rotation before we even start centers so that I know where the students are going. And then I don't get asked 17 times. Hey, Miss Jana, when am I going to puppets? Hey, Miss Jana, when do I get to do right the room? So they can look and if they do ask me they i refer them to look at my schedule i'm pointing because my smart boards over there and that's where the schedule usually is and that had been a huge 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 game changer because then i know everyone gets to everything and they aren't asking me 17 times when they get to do a center so after i learned the first time doing music centers that i needed a clear schedule and clear expectations i put 
everything, my schedule, my expectations, my rotation, how I do all of that in a PowerPoint that I'm sharing with you in my free resource library. So it is an edible PowerPoint that you can make your own and you can put your own expectations in, or you can just use mine. You can put your own rotation in, or you can just use mine so that the organization of music centers is like that much easier for you so you can find that in my free resource library which is linked down below or if you want to pay for it which would be kind of silly it's also in my teacher pay teacher shop all right so we've talked about why i do centers how i organize them now let's talk about what the kids actually do at centers when i plan centers i often plan four sometimes five centers and i try to have one center that works on melody one center that works on rhythm one center that has the kids either listen to music and write or draw about the music they listen to and then sometimes that can, center can also be like a composer center and one center that has the students doing a creative activity sometimes if i need to do a fifth center i'll make that the composer center i'll make that an instrument center like doing something like boom it's a mystery or something like that and that's kind of how i organize that now, over in my TPG shop, I have lots and lots of lots and lots of things that I have done in centers. So I'll link some of my favorites below. But if you go check it out, there's lots of those and there's lots for like different seasons and things like that. So my students, if I had to ask them to pick a favorite center activity, it would likely be the write the rooms that we do. And how write the room works is you walk around the room, you either look for a rhythm, a soulfish thing, and then you find it on your paper. So essentially, it's like a scavenger hunt. They love it. Some other things that we've done is I've just given the students like rhythm flashcards and said, okay, play poison rhythm, play rhythm detective. I've also done rhythm task cards where there's pictures and students have to figure out what rhythms go with the pictures. I've done composition, plop, matching games, go fish, play-doh mats. This last time with my one twos, I just let them play with the puppets and use it as a creative experience. And they had to write a story about what the puppets did. Music Uno, music dominoes we've done in the past. We've done mini composer studies and mini instrument studies. Um, one of the favorites of my older kids was watching like how it's made videos on different instruments that I just pulled off of YouTube and put like in a QR code and they scan to look at. We've done like reading music books. I've used Linda McPherson's interactive music games and some of my own music games on the technology, depending on what technology I have for any certain time. I'm trying to think what else. Um, stuff like Boom It's a Mystery we've done. We've taken like folk songs, not even folk songs, like nursery rhymes, and they've had to like arrange the order that the words go in. There's lots and lots of different things that you can do in music centers. But how I would recommend you start, because it can be overwhelming, is that you pick one melody activity, one rhythm activity, and then decide if you're going to do a listening, a composer, a careers in music, an instrument. But think of what your students can do independently. We're going to talk about that next. And also think of what you feel like you don't get enough time to teach during your regular time. Like I often don't think that I have enough time to teach composers. So in my older student centers, like my three, four, fives, I often put something about a composer. Sometimes it's just watching a video or reading a picture book but just so they have some exposure to that because I feel like that's something that sometimes gets left out in my overall program. All right, now we are just gonna wrap up with a few words of caution that I have when it comes to music centers. Number one, plan your groups carefully. And like I'm pausing for dramatic effect because this will make or break your centers. Think of the students that in your regular class need constant reminders about behavior. If you don't plan your groups carefully and put all of those students together, those behavior reminders are gonna be blown out of proportion when you do music centers because of the independent nature of the centers. Another thing to consider is maybe don't put all of the students who are super willing and super eager all into a group, but sprinkle them throughout your other groups so that all of the students can have that excitement and that eagerness. Same thing with your leaders. Put one of your leaders in every group so that if you have a student who maybe doesn't know what's going on, you can refer them to that leader rather than them coming and talking to you. Have most of your center activities be something that the students can do independently or have done before. You want them to be as independent as possible so that you have the time to work with those small groups of students and do that independent work with students. So you can't have students coming up to you every three minutes asking you how to do something. So either make it work that you can try the activity ahead of time with students or that you can 
make sure that it's something that they can do independently. Also have a plan for what students are supposed to do if they need to ask you a question. So my rule is you need to go ask three friends before you come and ask me. Go find three people, maybe it's either people in your group or someone who's done that center before, ask them before you ask me because my time is so valuable and I tell the kids this, it's so valuable that I can't have interrupt interruptions happen. My third piece of advice would be if you can, and this kind of goes what I said last, if you can have the students try the center as a class altogether, especially with your younger students or if it's something that they haven't done before, because then when it becomes center time, they'll be able to think back, oh yes, we've done this before. This is what my job is. This is how I'm supposed to go. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is how my finished product should look. All of those things. Four. Have everything laid out in buckets for students, and that includes the instructions for the center. I always leave my instructions for my centers on my smart board as they're going through, and you'll see that in the center presentation kit that you can get from my free resource library. But I also have a little instruction card that goes in the center bucket with the kids so that they can read it at the center as a group for what they're supposed to do. The chances are if you plan your groups, properly and you organize them enough, you'll already have a student in that who listened when you were talking and is able to help the other kids know what to do when they get to the center. All right, so that's pretty much all I have to go with at music centers. I will say that it is a lot of prep work ahead of time to get them organized and get yourself ready and make sure you have copies of everything. But when you get going with them, it's kind of easy. It gives you some room to breathe in your day because part of your lesson is already planned for your students. And like I said at the start of the video, music centers are something that my students really enjoy. They ask to do them all the time, even when they get their choice time from like their classroom management reward. Sometimes they'll ask to do centers because they enjoy it that much. And part of that is, is I'm very strategic in what I put at centers and I make it fun things that is maybe easier than what we what we do in whole group instruction but they really enjoy our center time and they ask for it frequently now if you seemed overwhelmed by all this information that's okay i'll be completely honest when i did centers for the first time last year with one of my groups it did not go as i ever thought it would uh there were lots of hiccups around along the way what i thought was independent the students couldn't do independently but when i did them this year I had figured out all those kinks. So if you're a little overwhelmed and nervous to try, I highly recommend just trying it. Give it a go. The worst that can happen is it doesn't work exactly how you want, but there will still be value for the students in it. And then you'll be able to know what you can do to help yourself and help your students when you do it next time. So that's all for now. It's a lot, but music centers are 100% worth the work. There's such a valuable learning and teamwork and collaboration and independence and all of that that comes out of music centers. So if you haven't tried music centers, try them. They're wonderful. A reminder of the things I am linking down below, there is going to be the music centers presentation kit that has everything that I use to organize my centers. That's all projectable onto my screen. There will also be some links to my favorite music centers activities that are in, from my TPT store. So I'll include a few different varieties there. I'll also include some of the things that sell really well in my TPT store that would also go well in some of my most popular things. So that's all for now. If you find this video interesting and useful and all of those good things, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share it so that you get notified when new videos come out and that other elementary music teachers can find my content and we can just spread the help, spread the joy, all of those great things. I hope you have a wonderful day and until next time, see you later.